and hello again and here's the alloy swing arm um, making for my 131 merch soft tail um, it's almost done now almost but not quite because this swing arm needs to have something a bit unusual in that the battery lives here on the swing arm itself because it's a drop seat evo frame now i've been looking around and i think i'm going to use this battery here this is a shido lithium iron battery very light and i've got something similar on two of my other bikes and this one here is in fact a where are we 14s which means it's about 14 amp hours equivalent to a standard battery and that's quite small compared to the 20 amp hour battery i've got on the bike at the moment but i can get away with that because these batteries these lithium ion batteries give a hell of a sort of a turnover when you first start the bike it's something like two or three times the power of a standard uh, old-fashioned lead acid battery so i can use this one on that big old 2.2 liter engine and it's going to have to sit something like that on this little area here. Um, yes, yeah, so the next step then is to make a tray for this, a sort of battery box, which will bolt onto here. And in fact, we've already sort of roughly marked out where those holes have to be. And then they'll be drilled and threaded to bolt the tray onto this piece here. And what we'll do is we'll make a billet tray for it to sit in and then it'll have two uprights, two little bars that come up, three bars with a cross piece to hold it nice and secure. And so to make that tray is the next job we have to do, but it's not quite the last job because I've also got to make a rear wheel spindle for this swing arm. I've already got a piece of EM24T steel. T is important because it means it's tempered. And so let's get over to the workshop and make that tray and make a start on that spindle too. Okay, so welcome to Jeff's workshop and which may be the last, hopefully the last video about making my alloy swing arm. And here we have a diagram, a very detailed diagram that we did. And we've advanced, it's not on cigarette packets anymore. Oh yeah, 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 it's yeah. on the back of an envelope yeah, now. it's on the back of an envelope. And Wait, what this is for is one, for a tray, for a battery. Not and you've been busy and here it is. Yes. Mark one version, still needs finishing, obviously. It's a bit rough and ready, but there it is. And it's made to take a particular size lithium iron battery that I found that hopefully will work with the bike. And here's the top of it. So if we get some uh, Freddy bar, it will screw into there, the right height, we're not sure the height yet. We'll screw them in level and then yeah. lock them in, yeah. And then that'll be something like that, if you can see that. Actually, you can't see that because it's too, uh, too too close you let me to, just to focus let me just uh, stop there okay so we'll just start again there to refocus and yeah so there's the top part which will clamp down the battery keep it nice and secure nut on top one each side and we're good to go um now where this is going to go is on the underside of the swing arm in front of the rear wheel so polishing it may not be such a good idea so i probably won't have it polished i might have it powder coated or Powder coating, coating yeah. something like that, or maybe even um, a ceramic coating or anodizing black, something like that. But it still needs to be polished first, of course, to make it look pretty. So that's my next task. So yeah, there's the um, battery tray, and that's one of several little jobs we got to do before the swing arm is finished. And the next one's going to be to make a rear wheel spindle. Okay, so let's just move this out of the way, Jeff. Yeah, get that. Get that out of the way. Yep, yeah. we're in a mess. And. Uh, that can live over there. That superb diagram can be binned. Mm -hmm. And what we've got here now we don't is that now, do we? a piece of EN24T, T for tempered steel. And unfortunately, it's not three quarter inch steel, which is what I need. 20 it's 20 millimeters. millimeters. And therefore, it needs to be machined down from 20 mil to about 19.4, I think, which is the equivalent of, a, of a three quarters. Now, the reason why I've not got three quarters is because this was free off Lister. Because he stocks metric sized stock like this. What he doesn't do is stock good old Imperial, Imperial anymore, and very few places would, I suppose. And therefore, for me to get some Imperial, some three quarter inch bar, I'd need to order some. And the minimum order quantity is three meters, three meters. about 50 quid's worth. And I need about 50 millimeter, sorry, 50 centimeters. So I'm not going to pay all that money out to buy three meters of it. So this is what we've got. It was free, can't argue with that. But it does mean it's got to be machine down and also i spent some money actually spent money on a little yeah. bag of bits i know Canuts. with the world's most expensive nuts Canuts and, and what we've got here is stainless steel 
UNF sized, three quarter inch of course. Nuts, I've got several actually, there's one there for one end. And I've got some washers and some, just in case I need it, some uh, split washers, great big things. And then I've also got here, to go on the other end, another nut. And all together, this small pile of bits was like 25 quid or something like that with, with um, delivery, because that's how much it costs these days for Imperial stuff. It was metric, it would be less than half the price, but being good old UNF, UNC, it's incredibly expensive. And the idea is, this will be threaded of course, machined down and threaded. That's one end sorted out, but at the other end, we're not, we're not just going to have a bar with a threaded end on both ends, we're going to weld this nut on the end of here. We're going to thread it and then screw it on and weld it. Yes, yep. and then put a cover on the, on, on the end in stainless. Basically all the weld will do is stop it from unscrewing. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Can you see that? Yeah, so that will be like one end, it's fixed, and then the other end will be threaded with this little one here. It is a nylock, but belt and braces, it's also going to have a washer and obviously one of these great big... I don't big, think you'll need them. Two, no. two flat washers? Yeah, well, I think will be perhaps not. Case. I mean, I've got some flat washers here anyway, so... Yeah. We are good to go, and so the first step is going to be to yeah. machine this down. Right. And that's what's next. Alright. Okay, no problem. There you go, on camera. T. Oh, it's okay. So anyway, yeah, the next step is going to be to machine this down to three quarter inches. Okay, and the last job is to modify these wheel adjusters because these have been machined out for... 20 mil. 20 mil. And yet they're going to need to be about 19.4 or three quarters. However, before we do that, what we're going to do is machine them out even more and put a stainless steel top hat in each one of them, inset, so that it's much stronger and it doesn't fret. And uh, yeah, what we can do is better. take it out to one inch. Yes. So if they're and, and just have them slid, if, as long as they're just a tap fit. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah, it's a tight fit. We'll, we'll make them just to one inch, and yeah. then if 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 the arm if there's it can well. If, well, we can then it modify. Can it. then be opened out. Yeah. yeah. Manual, um, the swinging arm is going to be difficult to open oh, out. Whatever. No, no, no. But the whole point of that was that because mm. at the time we did the swing arm, there was a possibility that I'll be using a metric rear end, a wheel, spindle, brakes, whatever, mm -hmm. off a Jap superbike or something like it, which would have had a 20 mil spindle, and that's why we did them at 20 mil. But no great loss, as I say. Oh, we can was. soon um, modify these and put an inset in there in stings, which will make them even better, hopefully. And so that's what's uh, next. But in the meantime, I've got to go and get the dog. So um, I'll be getting we'll on. We'll see that. you in a few days' time. Excellent. Okay, so here we are back at Jeff's, yeah. and a few days have passed by, and this axle's now been completed almost, almost. Machined up. Yeah, machined up, and we'll just see what's been going on. Let's just take this nut off the end, and what we're doing here is just making sure it's the right length, which it is, thankfully. It's not too short. It's not too long. But let me just. That off there and we'll just pull that out a little bit so you can see here this shaft has now been machined down to three quarters inch three quarters and and these adjuster blocks here which were 20 mil which would be no use to us have now been machined out a bit more and a stainless um steel it's no it's just a steel insert steel insert sorry yeah, has been put in there and the reason for that is partly yes we've got to do it anyway but also because it's harder than the aluminium so it's going to uh, resist wear and fretting and whatnot in the future so that's great and uh, yeah so the next step is just going to be to weld this stainless steel nut here onto the shaft yeah so that's um, that and then I can face machine it up and uh, yeah so I'll be happy with that let's just take it out and then I've got no more excuses to not get this thing finished off in terms of uh, either anodizing it polishing it painting it god knows what else and in fact my current best idea, I've changed my mind about 10 times about this, is that, yeah, I could polish it and it looked fantastic, except then I've got too much polished stuff over the back end of the bike. I've got a polished wheel, polished calipers, polish this, polish that. It's just too much. You need a bit of contrast. Anodizing it, yeah, I could do that. But what I'm currently thinking of is having it powder coated, black, so it merges in with the frame, apart from some of these pieces that can be left polished, such as these here. These can be polished. And also I'll leave this area here uncoated i'll just let them polish can they do, can they do it? oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Mask, just mask it off yeah and that's obviously because otherwise yeah i can powder coat it but then that goes in there nice and tight fit it moves back in two you have to watch it's going to and it's going to scratch it to yeah, hell so. so that was one reason why i didn't want to go for powder coating because i knew it was going to get scratched but i think if we leave that blank or sort of leave it polished we should be okay, good to go and also of course it shows the bike or rather it shows that this 
it's not just a standard steel swing arm it's actually built out of uh, billet aluminium which is cool so yeah that's currently what's going on still got a slight problem with my battery because i can't find the one i want but uh we'll come to that bridge when we come to it as it were we'll cross it when we come to it yeah so that's good that's now done we can move that away and uh almost there almost there and now we're back home again and while barney here has a well-earned rest i can show you this the rear wheel spindle it's all finished now as I said, this started out life as a 20mm bar. It's now three quarters, been machined down, been threaded at both ends, uh, stainless steel nut of course at this end, while at this end, the nut's been welded on and the edge has been machined nice and smooth, as you can see. So that spindle's now finished and it's time to move on to the next step. The next job is to add a bracket, which I forgot about when I had the new braces added to the new swing arm. And that bracket is this one here, which holds the torque arm in place, which in turn supports the rear uh, caliper. So I've made this little bracket here, which I think is too big. It looks a bit too big, so I'll make it a bit smaller before I get it welded on the new swing arm. And that's what's next. Phew. Okay, so here's the swing arm, about to be taken to be welded. And here's that little bracket and it's going to end up round about there I think something like that and so now I'm just going to take this and this to Jeff Haslam the welder and let him weld it on and there it is all welded on nice and neat and so with that done all the major work for the swing arm is pretty much done just got to drill some holes in here to mount the battery tray not done that yet because I'm not sure if I can use this tray for the suitable lithium-ion battery because these tunnels are the wrong way around. Um, they do make one which is an exact replica of a standard UASA battery but that would mean this battery tray is too small and that's why I've not yet decided what to do with that. Um, next thing to do then is to clean up the finish and so with a bit of a close-up hopefully we can see all these little nicks and burrs and scratches that have been put into the alloy surface. All that has to be removed with good old wet and dry sandpaper before I can carry on and have this thing either anodized or powder coated or ceramically anodized or even just leave it fully polished. But that work will have to wait because I'm pretty busy right now and just don't have time. And so I think for the time being then we'll call this finished and I'll come back to it when it's fully polished and on the bike at last. So anyway, thanks for watching and cheers.